Hello and welcome to the Unit 13 presentation on urinary elimination. Be sure to also watch the presentation on bowel elimination that's also provided. These are your learning objectives for urinary elimination. Please review them in preparation for the exam and for class. So the main function of the kidneys is to regulate the volume and composition of the body's extracellular fluid. A few points to remember from previous weeks. Extracellular fluid is found in the vascular system and in the interstitial spaces. Intracellular is where? Inside the cells. What main electrolyte is found inside the cells? It's potassium. What main electrolyte is in the extracellular? Sodium. Um, each kidney has more than 100 million nephrons, and each nephron can form urine. Each nephron has blood vessels attached to it by the glomerulus. The blood gets filtered and substances are resorbed, such as electrolytes. Secretion also takes place, meaning that the waste products are sent from the kidneys in the form of urine from the ureters to the bladder, where urine is held until the urge to void is felt. Voiding is a term for urination. We'll be discussing that in what some normal characteristics of urine are in the next several slides. So babies or infants have the micturation reflex. This is another word for urinating. They urinate automatically. Um, bladder training comes when the child's old enough to recognize the need to urinate. However, children can still experience enuresis, which is bedwetting. Enuresis would be a normal finding for babies up to toilet training age. It becomes abnormal after that. In the elderly, not being able to hold your bladder, getting up frequently at night, which is nocturia, or urinating when you laugh or sneeze can impact the quality of life. It's quite common for the elderly to develop UTIs without the usual system, symptoms of burning because of their urgency issues. UTI is not diagnosed until the patient becomes suddenly confused because they're missing all the other symptoms of UTI. Elderly are at increased risk of becoming septic quite easily, so we want to have an early diagnosis and treatment to try to prevent this. Key takeaway point here is to always suspect UTI if your patient suddenly becomes confused. So this slide lists several factors influencing voiding. Pause the PowerPoint and think about how each factor comes into play in voiding or inability to void. A note on infection here, catheter associated urinary tract infection or um, caudy can occur while a catheter is inserted or within seven days after the catheter is removed. Caudy is responsible for f up to 40% of hospital acquired infections and insurance providers often will not provide reimbursement for hospitalization for this because it's considered preventable. These are just some terms used um, to describe different types of urination issues. Um, Dysuria is painful voiding. There's many causes for that. Polyuria is excessive voiding in the absence of similar amounts of fluid intake. So if you drink an extra liter of fluid, you can expect to void an extra liter or maybe a little bit less in response to maintaining body fluid balance. Oliguria is less than 500 mils a day of urine. Um, examples of why that can happen include vomiting, diarrhea, burns, or kidney disease. That's anything that's going to um, take fluid output, maybe for insensible losses that we'll talk about in a bit. Um, anuria is less than 100 mils of urine out a day. People who have kidney failure and are on dialysis might have small to no urine outputs. Sometimes a provider wants a urinalysis done and you logically think, hey, if they're on dialysis, they don't make urine because the kidneys don't work. Don't assume this. They might need a straight cath to get the small amount of urine that's still in their bladder for the sample. Many dialysis patients do produce just tiny amounts of urine each day. Frequency can be related to UTI or pregnancy, and this is just voiding more than usual. Um, nocturia is getting up to go in the night and we want to educate the patient not to drink caffeine or alcohol after supper time. Um, both have diuretic effects from the sodium and electrolytes. Urgency can be normal if the urinary system is working correctly and you have a full bladder. This is that feeling, I gotta go and I gotta go now. Um, hematuria can be um, 
present with a UTI, that's blood in the urine, and sometimes the blood is microscopic, so we don't really see it directly. If we see it in the urine, though, the blood, we want to question why the blood is there. Is it a contaminated specimen, such as the patient's menstruating? Um, just be gender, gender neutral also, though, and know that microscopic blood can also be detected in men's urine if they're sent for a urinalysis, and this can happen if the male is masturbating. Um, enuresis is related to not being able to sense a full bladder or an urge to urinate. And this happens when children wet the bed while they're sleeping. It's not a conscious thing, it just happens. Um, urinary retention is being unable to empty the bladder, and as a result, urine builds up in the bladder and the bladder becomes distended. This leads to a feeling of pressure in the bladder with little to no urine output. And typically, the bladder holding greater than 600 mils of urine can be felt or palpated in the suprapubic region, which is just above your pubic bone but below your um, belly button. And if the patient feels that they're not emptying completely, palpation would not generally be the best way to check because it's difficult to palpate the bladder unless it's quite full. So a bladder scan would be used and this would be more appropriate and that's kind of like a little mini ultrasound done by nurses or unlicensed assistive personnel at the bedside um, and it senses the amount of urine in the bladder and then shows that on a um, little computer screen. Urinary retention puts the patient at risk for UTI because the longer urine sits in the bladder, the more chance bacteria have to multiply and cause infection. Potential causes of retention include prostate gland enlargement, fecal impaction, pregnancy, or anesthesia. Um, we can assess a post-void residual with a bladder scan or a straight cath to see how much urine the patient is retaining. And what that means is the patient voids and then we scan their bladder to see how much is still in there after they void. Urinary incontinence is not a normal part of agent, aging, um, but does happen. With urinary diversion, the bladder is removed and the procedure is called a cystectomy. Sometimes an ileal conduit is made and this is when the surgeon creates a small opening in the, in the abdomen called a stoma or a mouth. The surgeon then takes a short segment of the small intestine that's been removed from the rest of the intestine and connects it to one end of the stoma and then um, it routes urine out of the body that way. Another procedure is a neobladder and a and this is like a new bladder, and this is where a new bladder is made out of a portion of the small bladder, and then um, put in there. So we'll talk for a little bit about UTIs. Now, catheter-associated UTI, or CAUTI, accounts for up to 40%, like we said, of nosocomial infections, and most are due to non-aseptic catheterization. And that just means that uh, there was a break in the sterile field when the catheter was put in. So the um, urethra and bladder were contaminated when the catheter was placed. Urosepsis is sepsis that stems from um, a UTI. And this is a life-threatening complication. And so good hand washing and sterile technique during catheterization is essential for prevention. Uh, we also want to make sure we're doing routine Foley catheter care and routine peri care to get, um, cut down on bacteria around the site. Now, peridium is um, a medication that people take, and it kind of numbs the pain of burning with urination, and it does make the urine orange. So they'll see that in the toilet, but also just make sure you're educating your patient that the peridium maybe takes away the burning with urination, but it does not treat the infection. Antibiotics are still needed to treat the infection. And this chart is for objective F. It distinguishes the different types of incontinence. There's stress, urge, reflex, functional, or total incontinence. So take a few minutes to review the definition, causes, and treatments for each type of urinary incontinence that's listed here. So here is the way we start the nursing process. We begin with assessment. Ask the patient their usual avoiding characteristics. Do they have burning with urination, frequency, incontinence? Be sure to keep an accurate record of INO if appropriate. Normal urine output is at least 30 mils an hour, and this is on the low end, 
up to 60 mils an hour, which means about 1,500 cc's in 24 hours. Maybe a little bit less if you're on the um, 30 cc an hour end of it. Anytime the urine drops below 30 cc's an hour, though, or about 240 cc's in 8-hour shift, notify the provider. Kidney damage could be occurring if the urine output is that low, so they need to know that so they can um, figure out what's causing the problem sooner than later. A random urine specimen is a urine sample that doesn't have to be sterile, but it should not be contaminated with stool or toilet paper or anything else. This could be for a toxicology screen, for example. Um, a 24-hour urine sample is started after the first void and subsequent urine is then collected for 24 hours and the patient then empties their bladder um, at the end of the time frame also, and this is also collected. It's kept on ice uh, for the duration of the collection because that just keeps it a little bit fresher and doesn't get as um, stinky then. Um, this is used for testing of certain kidney function tests that may fluctuate over the course of 24 hours. It gives a better idea of certain kidney function um, components. Your analysis and urine culture checks for infection. White cells, nitrites, and bacteria in the urine indicate infection. Blood tests are used to determine kidney function. Imaging studies can be used to detect kidney stones, tumors on the kidney, or obstructions to the kidney or urinary tract. Cystoscopy is when a tube with a camera on the end is inserted through the urethra and into the bladder by a urologist to assess for stones, masses, or other issues. Um, and then trauma to the urethra during the procedure um, for the cystoscopy can cause hematuria, urine retention, or UTI. Here are some approved nursing diagnoses for urinary elimination problems. Again, remember that goals should be related to the problem. Outcome criteria should also be patient-specific, measurable, and realistic. So nursing interventions are what the nurse does for the patient to help the patient do for themselves or to be able to meet the stated goal. Notice some teaching opportunities for nurses to help patients prevent UTIs. Want to avoid often. Urinary stasis or um, just urine sitting there in the bladder leads to bacterial growth and infection. Females should void after sex. This flushes the bacteria away from the urethra. Bubble baths and harsh soaps change the native bacteria colonies and can allow for bad bacteria overgrowth, which leads to UTIs. Aside from that, bubble baths and harsh soaps can be irritating to the urethra and just cause um, more discomfort, if not an infection. This slide lists some more interventions for altered urinary function. Pay special attention to techniques that can help with incontinence, such as scheduled voiding and bladder retraining, Kegel exercises, external catheters, and incontinence pads, and of course, good hygiene is essential to preventing skin irritation and skin breakdown. There are special considerations for patients with urinary catheters. Remember, the minimum amount of urine per hour should be at least 30 cc's. Notify the doctor if it's less than 30 in an hour because this is a sign of potential kidney injury issues or fluid deficit. Monitor for signs of UTI because indwelling catheters increase the risk for developing UTIs. A patient should void within six to eight hours after the catheter is removed. The time the catheter is removed should be documented and handed off in report so that the oncoming nurse can follow up on signs of urine retention. And if your patient has urine retention, you can check a bladder scan uh, to see if it's a problem that they're not making urine or if it's a problem that they just can't empty the urine. And then, um, depending on that, you'd want to update the doctor, and they may order um, a straight cath, just which is a catheter that just goes in and then comes back out just to drain the urine for that time. But we'll talk about that here on the next slide as well. 
Um, these are different nursing interventions to assist with voiding problems. So suprapubic catheters are more permanent catheters that are surgically inserted into the bladder from above the pubic bone. Intermittent catheterization is when the catheter is placed to drain urine and then is removed until the next time it's needed. There's not a balloon on this type of catheter. It's just made for in, draining, and then out. Um, nephrostomy tubes are placed directly into the kidney to prevent urine from backing up into the kidney if there's a urine outflow obstruction or blockage. Leg bags hold urine drainage uh, from a catheter and simply strap on the patient's leg. Now they're going to need to be emptied a little bit more frequently since they're a smaller bag. So just keep that in mind. And then renal dialysis involves filtration of waste products through the blood out of a filter on a machine. Fluid and excess waste products are moved through the machine in place of the patient's kidneys. And then finally, we come to evaluation. We want to evaluate the goals and nursing interventions for effectiveness. Change them as necessary if they're not met or only partially met. And then again, this is an example of a care plan from your Craven text. Review it here or look it up in your text to see examples of a properly written care plan for um, this one's the patient with urge incontinence. And this concludes the presentation on urinary elimination. Thanks for watching and have a great day.